Hi right, YouTube, good morning. So today we're going to be cooking a prime rib roast bone in. About eight and a half pounds. I'm going to cook it on a rotisserie, the Weber kettle with the rotisserie attachment to it. Alright, we're back. So, as you can see, I've got, it's not a bad looking um, roast. I did leave some of the fat cap there. I was afraid to cut too much off because of the bones being cut loose. And, I uh, just didn't want it falling apart on me, but it's not a bad looking piece of meat. This is grass fed locally from uh, Ham Hancock's Family Farm in La Plata, Maryland. Um, a little pricey, but what is it these days? It runs, I think it was $17 a pound, uh, but it was pretty much trapped or, or uh, trimmed. It was originally tied up, but um, I wanted to trim it some more. I wasn't happy with the trim job, and um, so I tied it up and actually added another uh, string on there. Because they only had two on there, so I put a third one on there. And um, like I said, I salt brined it last night. I put some rosemary on it, but um, I'm going to go ahead and put um, a Worcestershire uh, binder on it. And I'll probably be adding some more um, rosemary to it, I'm sure. And during the cook, I'm going to baste this with a uh, garlic and rosemary and butter base throughout the cook. Um, I'm not real sure. I gotta look in the refrigerator. I can't remember if I have any time or not, but I know I've got rosemary, I know I've got garlic cloves, and I got garlic paste, so that'd be good as far as all that's concerned, but we're just going to get this thing rubbed up with some Worcestershire and then we're going to my my go-to seasoning for beef um, pork too for that matter but I really enjoy it with some beef um, like I say it is good on pork and that's uh, Bill Purvis his uh, chicken fried barbecue Texas uh, rib grind um, it's quickly becoming my favorite. There's other seasonings that I do like. Um, of course, Uncle Steve would be you know, right there near the top of the list. Um, it, well, he is the top of the list as far as other stuff like for the, the gator shakes and the um, bird shake and stuff like that. I absolutely love his stuff for that. But... Um, Go ahead and do the bottom side first. Show some love to the bones. I'm going to go pretty heavy with this stuff. I'm on a rotisserie, and that was the only reason why I was really sort of concerned with trimming this thing back too much uh, for fear of, you know, burning it up. But uh, if need be, I'll take and uh, foil it on a rotisserie and cover it up to protect it.
this set a little bit. Get the uh, rotisserie attachments ready to hook on, and we'll bring it back. All right, YouTube. And once again, I gotta apologize for the traffic. Apologize for the traffic. But as you can see, we got it on the spit. Uh, getting ready to start on the rotisserie. I'm only running one basket of coal right now, and it probably has about I don't know, maybe 20 uh, briquettes in there and some lump. But I'm gonna throw. Um, some hickory on there also. Throw a couple pieces of hickory on there and uh, get the smoking. And let's get this thing turning. I got sweated out pretty well. Actually, I'm sort of kind of happy with that. I'm hoping it's a nice looking piece of meat or a nice tasting piece of meat. It's my first prime rib I've done. I'm a little bit concerned with the bone being cut away, but like I say, I have it uh, cinched up in with three pieces of rope, but uh, one of the forks, the probe for the uh, spit fork, went right into the cut of the, um, where the bones have been cut loose, so I'm hoping that isn't going to create a problem here, but um, time will tell, I guess. The strings are fairly tight. I don't know that it will, so um, like I said, time will tell. I couldn't move it up any further because I wanted to keep it somewhat uh, balanced when you're know, on the spit. So if I moved it anymore, I would afraid it would just would have hopped around too, a little too much. So, um, so this is where it starts, and we'll bring you back during the cook. And uh, I'm going to try and run this thing. You know, it's, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to try to keep it down around 250. This thing likes to cook around 300 or higher. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep it around 250 to 300 max. Hopefully I can keep it at uh, 250 to 275. So. But um, after these coals die down a little bit more, I'll have uh, uh, be able to manage it some more. I just wanted to, it's cold out here today, although it's nice and sunny. It is a little chilly. I think it's 36 right now 37 so um i wanted to get that heat up get this thing this kettle warmed up so that's where we're at youtube and we'll bring you back all right so that's ready play around some more stuff and wait for this cook and we'll bring you back all right youtube just coming back for a quick pitch. I see it's getting ready to come off the uh, rotisserie. And um, I've got to get things going here. I'm running out of time, as usual. Everybody wants something right now. I don't think about how long I cook. I did have to put two more strings on it when the butcher cut the bone. He cut the bone all the way off. After it thawed out, I realized that. Um, so I put two more strings on it, but it's looking really good. And we'll bring it back here shortly. All right, YouTube, we brought it back in. Unfortunately, I've got to go. I've got to, I'm not going to be able to slice it for you. But uh, we'll get a couple pictures and get all that posted, and maybe I can get a picture uh, once I get it to my daughter's house. But we're getting ready for the rest. The rest I'm probing right now. Let me check it when I pull it off. One eighteen. So I'm sort of happy with that. I like to send seem like another five degrees. Actually, it's not bad. Twenty-one, one twenty. Like to see about another five degrees, but I'm happy with that. I gotta go. All right, we'll bring you back later on for the recap. All right, YouTube, we're back for our recap. Um, this is for the prime rib. 
put the prime rib, you know, it turned out really nice, but it wasn't the, the, the best of conditions. Um, I had an eight and a half pound uh, prime rib roast bone in, uh, grass fed cattle that uh, I bought locally at a, a place in La Plata, Maryland called Hancock Family Farms. First time I ever used them. And uh, it was a nice piece of meat. I really enjoyed it. The only thing I, a couple things really, that I really wasn't happy with is that uh, when they cut the bone, they actually cut the bone all the way off and then just tied it back on, which I thought was a little odd, but it is what it is. I had to end up dealing with that. When I put it on the rotisserie, it started coming apart. So I actually I cut it apart and put some more, uh, trimmed it some more and then had to retie it anyway so that's when I found out the bone was cut off all the way but um, it is what it is turned out fine um, I put it on a Weber rotisserie with uh, hickory smoke uh, burnt a little wood frontier lump and uh, Kingsford charcoal to start it but uh, probably ran it cooked for three three and a half hours but the problem was is that I had to be at my daughter's house where we were having dinner and uh, so I only got it up to about I think it was 223 degrees when I pulled it and put it in an insulated bag and made a 50 minute 55 minute drive with it so um, when I got there and sliced it or when I got there it was probing at 128 still um, but they don't really like real rare meat so I put it in the oven for a little bit try to get the temperatures up on it and when I sliced into it it was extremely rare which I mean some of the people including myself didn't really mind but there's other people there that really didn't really would prefer a medium rare but um, but you'll see that in the video I did slice it there I uh, didn't do a taste test or anything didn't even want to take a picture of it to be honest with you because um, didn't want to bring the side business YouTube thing to a family dinner so um, but I did end up taking a picture of it anyway and um, it turned out pretty good I was really happy with it great flavor um, my seasoning on it uh, while it was turning is I did salt brine it overnight um, and then I put a little bit of rosemary leaf on it uh, also while it uh, sat in the refrigerator but this is my go-to rub, you know, this uh, chicken barbecue Texas rib grind is my go-to rub. I really like this stuff, um, especially on beef. Um, I have used it on pork, it's really good on pork too, but um, that peppery flavor, I just really find it great uh, on beef. So, if you don't have any of this, you should really try to get yourself a bottle of this stuff because it's, it's really good. Um, then we um, uh, melted down some butter. I added garlic to that. I added uh, thyme to that. I added more rosemary leaves. And then I actually, as a basting brush, I had rosemary twigs, branches, whatever you want to call them, that I tied up and made a little basting brush out of them. And I kept basting the, uh, the, the uh, prime roast as it cooked and um, it really turned out good it, had, it really had a good flavor to it with the exception of you know I wish I didn't have to stop it and haul it for 50 minutes and then finish it up in the oven I just would have liked to have been able to finish completely on the rotisserie but like I said I enjoyed it um, eight and a half pounds there was see two four six people that were eating on it and um, there wasn't a whole lot left so uh, but it came home with me <laughs> so I think that's about it YouTube I just want to do the uh, recap and tell the story about it a little bit more I'm sure I've probably forgotten something since it's uh, overnight and uh, I'm an old man so I don't really remember things as well as I used to remember but um, I think that's it this is Lance from St. Mary's County um, sleeper barbecue thanks for joining us and we've got more videos to come Merry Christmas.